thanks for seeing me. I mean, letting me come to your meeting. So how does this work? Do you want me to just do you <laughs> give my side of the story? Okay, uh, so um, I submitted my complaint, and then Christine told me that you're letting this patron continue to use the library. Frankly, I think you're wrong. I think they should be banned. I thought my complaint about his behavior toward me and, and some of the other women was enough, but I guess not. So here I am. I'm going to try to explain what it's like. You know, Christine kept talking about our patron code of conduct policy. And on paper, on paper, it, and it may seem like staring shouldn't get someone banned from the library. But you're the trustees. You don't work there. There's staring, and then there's staring. It's like... You know, mm. and when I get up and move around, he's still. Hmm? I could be sitting at the desk or I could be getting up to help someone with a copier or I could be putting a book back on the shelf. My point is, it doesn't matter where I am or what I'm doing. He just keeps staring at me and he does the same thing to Lil and Deborah, but he doesn't do it to Michael. And. It's threatening. Christine said there was an accident, supposedly, back when he was a kid. So when he's staring, he's really not staring, staring. He's, he's just, he's, he's looking off into the space in front of him. He can't control it. He's, he's stuck at age 12. I would love to believe that. I would. And, oh, not that I'm wishing that anyone has a traumatic brain injury, God forbid. No, no. I would love to believe that he was just staring into space innocently and not staring at me with this, this, this look like I, I don't even exist. Like he doesn't want me to exist. And, and yes, People who have disabilities, yes, they should be allowed in the library. Well, well really, anywhere, right? Um, but where's the line? Is there a line? I, I mean, do you think disabled people can be jerks? Or does he get a pass because of this <laughs> supposed accident? I mean, what, he, he doesn't have to learn how to behave or deal with the consequences? Everyone else does. So who wins? Because this staring, it's not blank staring. It's intentional staring. I know he can control it because he watches me wherever I go. It's creepy. It's that same kind of look that men give you. Predators, it's that same look. You women on the board, you know what I'm talking about. Everyone says, it's not your fault. You're not doing anything to provoke his attention, but it doesn't matter. I'm out on the floor trying to do my job. You catch their eye, and then they watch your moves, study your patterns, learn when you usually take your breaks, when you're going to be on the desk. They figure out the times when it's quiet after the kids have gone downstairs to story time when you're going to be on the desk alone. And then they start circling. He literally goes from the computers to the sales shelf to the, to the DVDs and then through the fiction stacks and back to the computers. He literally circles my desk. And then he sits right back down at the computer in line with where I sit at the desk. I'm not imagining it. I'm telling you. I'm trying to tell you that this is not the mindless staring of someone who had an accident or can't control themselves. This is not 
innocent. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Um, how can I look? At my old job at the coffee shop, there was this one guy who would come in, dressed nice, in a tie, looked professional. We all called him office guy. Hmm? Office guy had these very clean hands, very clean, manicured nails. I didn't know guys did that, you know, <laughs> get manicures. But I thought, hey, you do you and good for you <laughs> for having <laughs> the money that you can spend on a manicure. Well, I got sweat driven down my ass and down my back <laughs> pulling your $5 coffee. So office guy would take his order and then sit at one of the tables where apparently had a good view of the staff, but we didn't have a great view of him. I mean, not that we knew at the time. It was Janelle who saw it first. One day, after the morning rush of customers, I was wiping down tables, and she comes over, and she hisses, Haley, and then she kind of tilts her head in her eyes. So I follow her gaze, and I look over at office guy, and he's sitting at his usual table with his usual $5 coffee, and he's staring staring at us with his fucking hands down his pants. <laughs> Sorry for the language. It's just, it's still. A... Look, do what you want it in your own home, but in a coffee shop, we didn't say anything. We didn't do anything. And office guy kept coming in every Thursday. And when we finally complained to management, Janelle was starting to have nightmares. Mm -hmm. They didn't believe us. Check the security cameras, we said. <laughs> nah, doesn't matter. Nah, it happens. Deal with it. Put your big girl panties on and get back to work. Mm. I quit. A whole bunch of us quit. I mean, Janelle was having nightmares. No one gave a shit. And our guy, our traumatic brain injury guy, same thing. He's sitting at the computer with that same dead eye stare. I haven't caught him with his hand down his pants yet, but it's only a matter of time. He's doing it. Okay, look. What do I have to say to get you to change your mind? That I started seeing a counselor that uh, that I'm 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 having nightmares. Is that what it takes? Fine. Now you know. I I didn't put that in my written complaint because I, <laughs> I didn't think I had to. I thought you would understand and do something. I try to deal with it. My counselor said I don't get paid enough to have to deal with it, and I should speak up for myself. She said management gets paid enough and needs to do something. So here I am, and now you. Elected officials making decisions, voting on things. Why don't you do something? You know, I thought <laughs> working in a library would be different from working in a coffee shop. I really did. I, I thought, oh, wow, books, reading, wow, civilization. I mean, I didn't realize it was the same public. I mean, it's a public library, Haley. But, you know, honestly, <laughs> I, I want to know. <laughs> when did the public get so shitty? Can you tell me? <sighs> it used to be different. We used to take care of each other. When I was a kid, I went to the library every day. The librarian was Mrs. Sweetser. That was her real name. She was, she was quiet and calm. My house was loud and um chaotic. I'd stay until closing and she never asked questions. She probably didn't need to. It was a small town, but she always smiled at me when I came in and she always made me feel seen. My counselor said that kids who grow up in a home like mine can become hyper aware of how people act. You know, you get a sense about people. And Mrs. Sweetser had a had a steadiness about her. I, I, I guess what I mean is I have a sense about people. 
I know when someone might be a threat. And I know, I know sometimes the threat isn't real, but sometimes it is. This is real. This look judges you. It makes a judgment about you and it it goes deep and it dissects you and it starts with your body. Look, I know I'm nothing special in the looks department and my butt, well, I, I got a little bit more to work with than some people, but he stares and it's like my existence is offensive. And then he strips me with those dead eyes of his. He judges my clothes and my shoes, my hair color and he moves all of it dress shoes hair and he keeps staring and his eyes bore into me and he, he 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 separates my arms from my torso and my legs from my hips and then my arm separates into all the layers the skin and the muscle the bones and the veins and the flesh on my legs are flayed and finally he separates my head from my body and I'm I'm just I'm gone Right. I know that look. That's the look that says, deal with it. Deal with it, Haley, because we won't. Even though we should, we don't want to. So let's just agree she's too sensitive. Okay. Well, I know what I know. You should stand up for us, for me. And if you shouldn't, you shouldn't be on this board. I won't be the last person to complain about this guy. Mm -mm. You can't hide in your meeting room forever. One day, you're going to have to deal with it. Mm. Ah.